Uh, my name's Guy Claxton. I'm a visiting professor currently at King's College in London and a researcher, cognitive science researcher, into learning to learn. The learning power approach is a way of teaching and a way of organizing schools that help kids get the best possible results they can, but do it in a way that gradually, systematically builds their capacity and their appetite for being independent learners and doing that through normal lessons. So the learning power approach basically is a number of techniques that teach us or techniques we might say or small adjustments to the way they work in the classroom which gradually builds students' confidence and capacity to learn independently, to take more responsibility. So, for example, allowing more research time in the classroom, allowing children to use their smartphones or their tablets as a source of research. If a question comes up in the classroom that nobody knows the answer to, OK, get on your phones, two or three of you together, see what you can find out about it two minutes, go. Make the classroom more like real life. Make the classroom a place where the children are investigators, not just consumers of education. There are some difficulties. Some teachers are anxious because it involves beginning to trust students more, to give them more responsibility and some teachers are afraid that if they loosen their, their own control in the classroom, the students will behave badly or they won't learn, they'll just be lazy. This never happens, but it's a fear that some teachers have. They also have a fear that the traditional results, the grades, the test scores, might suffer if they adopt the learning power approach. Again, it doesn't happen. Children who are more confident, more willing to learn, do better on the tests. They learn faster. But again, in teachers' minds, understandably, but wrong-headedly, there is some of this fear which might make them reluctant to move. So one of the characteristics of the learning power approach is that we give teachers just a succession of small things to do not a big thing, so they don't have to go like this, like a big jump. Just small things that they do that gradually change the atmosphere in the classroom and gradually build children's enthusiasm for taking more independent control of their own learning. Yes, we should be involved in, I mean, most of my work is with serving teachers, with schools uh, directly. But we should also, I think, be working much more with teacher training so that these ideas, this possibility that children can do more for themselves, they can be trusted, they can have their competence built to take more control, to manage their own learning more. We ought to be building teachers' capacity to share that control with students and doing it both in service, teachers who are already in schools, but particularly with new teachers, so that when they go into schools they make a difference in the right way, rather than underestimating children's capabilities. Oh, there are so many little practical pieces of advice, to little ways of getting started. Talking to children about your own things that you find difficult. For example, just sharing in the classroom the idea that everybody struggles with things when they're learning, that that's part of being a learner. Changes the atmosphere. Changing the language that you use, from telling kids that this is the case to just suggesting that it might be the case or it could be the case immediately invites children's willingness to be more imaginative, 
to be more critical. Small shifts to language, to behavior, to modeling, to the layout of the furniture in the room so that it invites more conversation. There are just dozens and dozens of very low risk things that teachers can do to set out, to take the first steps on this journey. We need to have some sort of testing. We need to know how well the students are doing. We need to know whether our approach is being effective to produce the outcomes that we want. But what mustn't happen is if testing becomes the main point of schooling, then children just learn to perform for the test and they lose their intrinsic pleasure in learning for its own sake. Instead of enjoying the process of diving deep and exploring and investigating things, they just want to know whether they've got the right answer, whether they've got a good grade. So their learning becomes poisoned by assessment rather than supported by assessment. So we need to change our practice a little bit around assessment. Memorization can be useful, nothing wrong with it. Remembering your times table, three threes are nine, four threes are 12, doesn't do you any harm, but it's one tiny aspect of the learner's mind is their ability to memorize things. More important is their ability to be good researchers, good explorers, good inventors, good questioners, good collaborators, good discussers, those things are more important. But memorization, fine, it's useful. It's one tool in the toolbox. I was very influenced by, I remember reflecting on my own experience of education whilst I was doing a PhD. And when I was doing my PhD, my supervisors were very, you could say lazy. They offered me very little guidance. And for the first time in my educational life, I had to think for myself. I had to design my own learning. And it was a liberation. It was difficult, but it was very liberating. And I realized that up until that point, my education had been training me to be dependent upon the teacher. And now I was becoming independent. And then I thought, everybody should have this experience, not just people doing a PhD at Oxford University. This is useful for everybody. So it became my career. It became my research interest, as well as my personal insight. It's been a real pleasure being here at the conference. It's been a bit windy, but I think that's helped to liven us up and to create a really good atmosphere for people to talk together, think together, and explore new ideas in education so that we will help the next generation become more imaginative, more creative, more entrepreneurial, the kinds of minds that the world needs, rather than people who can just jump through hoops and get good grades. It's been a pleasure. <laughs>